guys, Axel Firefly here, here to bring you a little bit of a different video. Today I'm going to be talking about my Harry Potter persona. So, I know this is a little bit weird because I usually talk about Pokemon or gaming. Well, here's the thing. I have other interests. I have other passions. There are things beyond the horizons of my Nintendo Switch and my 3DS and my gaming life. I like photography. I like cooking, I like baking, I love reading way more than I love video games. Like my yearly goal was to read 50 new books a year and most of the time I actually hit the 50 goal. I'm, I'm talking about like, like actual books, not like going to the library, checking out every Dr. Seuss book and reading those in the afternoon. No, I'm, I'm talking like talk big boy books, something you can actually talk about on a date and not feel ashamed of yourself. Actually, one year I was born, I did read all the Magic Treehouse books because I just wanted to see if there was like an actual story arc to it. No spoilers for you, though. I have a rule about spoilers. But anyway, to prep myself for the crime of Grindelwald and to contribute to a not for profit I work with, I decided to create a new Harry Potter persona. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I do work with a not for profit organization. We are called Reach. We teach anti bullying, literacy, history, all of it cosplay, which in my opinion is freaking amazing. But one of the things I discover is not really talked about in our group, despite it being a really big deal and not really discussed in school in general or anywhere in general besides, you know, uneducated Facebook posts is depression, suicide, anxiety, PTSD, uh, just, you know, situations like that. So I figured, well, since Prime of Grindelwald's coming out this year, and I'm a big fan, uh, I'm gonna create a new Harry Potter persona, which is something I don't usually do, but I do have one. I've had this one for years, and it is not Pottermore official Wandwood. Um, my my Wandwood is definitely different than Pottermore, but I'm gonna just talk about a little bit about. My, my Hogwarts house, my Ever Morning house, why I feel like I belong there, where do I feel like I would have felt or belonged in in Hogwarts. I won't be talking about Ever Morning because most of you may not even know what Ever Morning is, and I know I might save that for another video. I actually don't even think there would be much of a difference between where I would be in Ever Morning versus Hogwarts. And where what I would have done if had I been around during the Battle of Hogwarts, where Harry finally defeats Tom Riddle. Yeah, I'm not going to call him Voldemort. Or Voldemort. Voldemort. Or he who must not be named. No, he's Tom. He's always been Tom to me. Like, as soon as they announced his name, I've always just called him Tom. Uh, just because I love Dumbledore. He's actually one of my... One, if not my favorite character in the entire series. Um, but that's the start of my Hogwarts house. I am a proud Ravenclaw. Hashtag Ravenclaws. Um, that is part of more official. Um, although I've always kind of known I was in Ravenclaw, I'm relatively, I'm arguably smart. Depends on who you ask and what are we talking about? I mean, I can talk to you about physics, chemistry, and history and stuff like that, but ask me who's playing the Super Bowl this year. I'll look at you awkwardly and ask you to go get tacos with me. That's the that's the five percent Hufflepuff that's in me. I gotta eat. I love food. I love baking. But uh would be a right talk. Um where I would have fit in the school I don't really think I would have been popular. Um, I'm just basing this off of like where I was in like my junior high and high school life. Like, I mean, I was friends with like the popular kids, but I wasn't really, you know, going to all the parties. It wasn't really, you know, like everyone's like shouting my name, wondering what I'm going to do next. Um, except my history class. Actually, I love my history class because uh, my teacher actually gave me like 15, 20 minutes to just spout off. Um, something I had learned because he just enjoyed how I presented what I learned like the night before, <laughs> which was really entertaining. But uh, 
I don't, yeah, like I said, I don't really think it would have been popular in Hogwarts, probably, like, known and, like, respected, kind of like how I was in, in junior high and high school, but, you know, not, you know, everyone's cheering my name. Um, I did play baseball, so I would say that I would be on the Quidditch team. Um, it's actually really funny because um, I'm not a huge soccer fan, and I would never play goalie, but the fact that I can see myself playing the position of keeper is absolutely hilarious, just because the reason I wouldn't play, you know, goal goalie is because I don't like the idea of a giant freaking ball coming up my face. But, you know, let's have three magical balls coming at my face. And, you know, 70 feet in the air. Makes it a lot better, apparently. <laughs> um, my Patronus is a coyote, which is actually really, really funny because if you pay attention to North American, Native American lore, um, the coyote is mischievous. Um, I'm paraphrasing this obviously just because, I mean, I love mythology and I love, you know, world cultures and stuff like that, but if I remember correctly, yeah, coyotes were like mischievous, like it leads to like the devil or just like evil spirits, uh, which is definitely funny because I never really see myself as like a villain or anything like that. I definitely um, a chaotic neutral, either chaotic neutral or chaotic good. Um, now that I'm thinking about this, um, it was my Ilvermorny house test. It actually presented a couple, like, really hard questions, and one of them, I'm not even kidding you, this was an actual question I was asked on Pottermore. J.K. Rowling, or one of her team members, gave me this question, but it was something along the lines of, either you could save this baby, or save this potion that could potentially save a thousand people. And I'm sitting here just like, oh my gosh. Like, I, it took me like half an hour before I could actually answer the test because like I actually had to sit down with myself and have like a heart to heart. And guys, please don't judge me, please. <laughs> I'm already judging myself, but I picked the potion. I didn't choose to save the baby. I love babies. They're amazing. I would never, like, I have, like, this weird fear of pulling them, but I love their little cheeks and their little toes, but I gotta save the thousand people. Like, there was a chance at saving a thousand people, and it was, it was really hard, and I felt like I didn't deserve the house um, that I got for, for Ilvermorny. If you guys want me to talk about my Ilvermorny house, um, in another video, guys, just let me know in the comment section. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, and I have plenty of videos I can talk about for Harry Potter. Um, anyway, back to my Patronus being a coyote. Um, it was actually really funny, because I remember when the Patronus test had originally come out, I was working for a pharmaceutical company as a quality assurance specialist, where it's basically making sure that medications met FDA regulations. And so, you know, I'm trying to pay attention to these uh, readings on some medications, talking to a co-worker while trying to take this test all at the same time. I wasn't really paying attention to the test, I was kind of just taking a whole bunch of answers, and my, I'm, I'm going to call my unofficial Patronus because I wasn't paying attention, I wasn't all in, but I had gotten an aardvark, and that was really hilarious. I hated it, and I'm like, I feel like I deserve something a little bit better than a freaking armadillo. No, not an armadillo, an aardvark. Okay? Because when you hear the word aardvark, who do you think of? Yeah, that's right. You think of Arthur. So, you know, I think all my friends about it. Like, hey, yeah, and they're all like, dude, there's a Pottermore, like, Patronus test, it's funny, official. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I joke it. And everyone's, you know, everyone's getting thresholds and horses. Actually, uh, my roommates, okay, former roommates, they're also, like, my kids, they're like a year, year and a half young, and weird, weird story behind that, not, not gonna be in a video, but love them to pieces, anyway, um, they, they were getting, like, bears and horses, and other friends were getting, like, rabbits and thresholds, I think one friend even got, like, a dragon, and everyone's like, well, what did you get? A fucking art park. And so, you know, for, like, a week and a half, people are constantly sending, like, episodes of Arthur, and our 
Arthur theme song. Um, someone actually made a video and sent it to me where Harry's like shouting expecto Patronum and then it breaks into the Arthur theme song. And I thought that was hilarious, but I did go back. I actually ended up having to remake my account recently because there was just something wrong with the original email account that I had for my Pottermore. Fine, because I'm, I'm a much different person now. Uh, my house, my house didn't change. My wand, I'm not going to say it changed because I had my East Indian Rosewood for, you know, longer than Pottermore has been around. But anyway, um, I really don't know what else to, oh, uh, another thing I would want to talk about in this video is where I would have been had I been at the Battle of Hogwarts. Um, I'm, I'm a tactician, alright? I love, despite what you see on my, you know, showdown videos, I actually really do uh, plan things out, and I definitely would see me, you know, joining McGonagall or, you know, one of the groups of team members up in the Astronomy Tower. Um, one thing I like to do when I'm playing, you know, multiplayer games, or, you know, where you have options of, like, what kind of characters you have, like wizards, paladins, you know, crap like that, I usually pick the wizard, and a you know, wizard or cleric, you know, I'm sitting in the back, you know, I'm shooting spells, you know, from far, because I also know that I'm reckless, and so I'm charging in there and not really prepared. So I like being able to pull myself away and being able to analyze the situation and, you know, act accordingly. I like being able to, you know, plan things and just like, okay, adjust things accordingly in a steady pace as opposed to, you know, having to constantly just, I don't know if you can actually hear me snapping, but there's snapping. But, uh, yeah, definitely the Astronomy Tower, um, Astronomy Tower, Ravenclaw Tower, you know, I'm just gonna say Ravenclaw Tower, put me in Ravenclaw Tower, you know, protect, like, my hidden stash of Cool Ranch Doritos is just hiding under my bed. Despite, you know, being a wizard, somehow get Cool Ranch Doritos in. You know, Muggle can bring in snacks, I guess. I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm not a mudblood. But, that's the point. Protect my Doritos. <laughs> Protect my little stash of fruit snacks under my pillow. Like, okay, I gotta make sure, you know, save the school, but gotta save my fruit snacks. But, that's basically it for this video, um, I probably will, I might make a few more Harry Potter videos, um, just because it is something I'm passionate about, and until Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu, Let's Go, Let's Go the Eevee come out, there really isn't a whole lot for me to really, um, really show you guys, really discuss, um, Generation 7, which is kind of bleh for me, but before I leave, um, I want to know, what is your Hogwarts house, um, if you can't make it, you know, Pottermore official, uh, I request that you'd be Pottermore official with your house. Just, it be, I just feel like it's a lot more, a little bit more concrete, as opposed to, I just want to be cool and one of the heroes like Harry, Ron, and Hermione, so I'm going to be a Gryffindor, or the, I'm going to be edgy, so I'm going to be a Slytherin, or, fuck, I'm a Hufflepuff. But, uh, what is your house, what is your wandwood, what is your Patronus, and the final one is what would you be doing during the Battle of Hogwarts? Now, I will give you some restrictions for this because I know a lot of people can get really crazy, especially with fan fiction. So, the restrictions are it, your abilities during the Battle of Hogwarts are basically just based off your knowledge of the books and the wizarding world itself. So, they're this is basically to prevent, like, people like, I would be fighting alongside Harry, and I would go into the forest with him, and I would shout spells at him, and knocking out all the Death Eaters, despite me having the combat abilities of a potato. So, and what are your chances of survival based off of, you know, your knowledge of defensive and combat of spells? Um, I actually pulled up a spell list of back when Deathly Hallows Part 2 came out, and I studied up on those for about eight months, so I know a lot of the spells. Um, me and a friend of mine, we actually even came up with wand movements. 
to actually like make the spells and we actually practice the wand movements so we can actually do nonverbal spells solely based off how we move the wand, which is really, really fun and super dorky. But that's basically it. If you guys want to see another Harry Potter topic video, I will definitely, I will definitely make one. I love them. And I will see you guys in the next video.